The winters are long, dark, and cold in Iceland, of course. In Reykjavik, the capital of the island nation, gets just four hours of daylight per day. Here's your proof. <laughs> this is a live picture. It doesn't look pretty, though. Live picture from Reykjavik. Snow on the ground, the lake nearly frozen over. I hope so, for that person's sake. And the sun sets, get this, at 3.30 p.m., more than five hours ago. A good reason why the Icelandic people are voracious readers any time during the year, but definitely this time of the year. In fact, the Icelandic people have a cherished tradition called Yola Bukaflut. It's the Christmas book flood. Yes, a flood where people give and receive new books and begin reading them straight away on Christmas Eve. Write that in there. Here's more proof that Iceland is a nation of bookaholics. Iceland has more published authors per capita than any country in the world. One in ten, in fact. Even its prime minister is a published author. She is the co-author of the book, Reykjavik, A Crime Story. Joining me now from the capital to talk about the island of fire, ice, and apparently books is Heider Svensson. He is the president of the Icelandic Publishers Association. And I so thank you for joining us. We're very excited about this story because we're not talking about the volcano. We're talking about a flood, a book flood. Can you please explain this tradition to us, uh, how it started and why it still means so much to people in Iceland? Hello. Hi. Nice to uh, see you all and, and thanks for inviting me. Well, it, 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 it all started in the, in the uh, time of the, uh, the Depression after the Second World War. And, and at the same time, we got independence from, Dan from, the, uh, from Denmark. And there was a you know, very bad economy. And, and, and you know, there was, uh, we were trying to control our economy by having a quota, uh, for example, on commodity goods. And, and before Christmas, uh, at the same time, I think it was around 1944, uh, there was there was so strict quota that we could actually we couldn't import. Uh, you were not allowed to import commodity goods goods for for Christmas present. So what did we do? We just made our own. We had we had the knowledge. We had the authors or translators. There was no quota actually on the paper, so we could import paper. We could uh, we wrote the books and printed them. And voila, there you had the perfect Christmas gift. You created your own entertainment right there at Christmas time. Now, uh, Iceland has been described yeah. as, as ultra literary. We'll say you're ultra literary. Why do you think that this tradition, though, outlasts the internet, social media, maybe even AI, all of it? Because so many of us, guilty as charged, complain we don't have the attention span that we used to anymore. Why Iceland? How can you guys keep this up? Well, well, you know, it's it's partly as a gift market, so it's a it's a it's a, it's a very personal gift. It's like you know, I have to study what you would like to read, and then I try to find something, and it's very personal. The, the, this gift, so partly it's, it's a gift market, and partly it's just a you know this huge market, a massive uh, uh, you know uh, new new titles on, on the market, which which of course individual despite for for themselves, but 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 you know. I don't know. You know, we are we are the nations of sagas. You know, uh, you know, we like telling stories. We, we we like to share stories, and and I think this partly is just a part of our DNA, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and and you know, it's, it's it's not very easy for me to to explain it either. And yeah, part of our, our cultural history, part of our the Icelandic sagas, of of, of course. Uh -huh. And, and, you know, we like to tell stories. I'm so interested to hear you say that it's not a solitary thing, that it's actually a community thing. It's something that brings people together. Now, what have been some of the yeah. most popular books in Iceland this year? And I want to ask you, what, what was your flood like this year? What did you read? What did you get? Well, you know, I, I, I because I'm a book publisher, uh, you know, uh, people are, maybe people are a little bit afraid that, you know, buy, <laughs> give, give me a book for Christmas present. So I have to buy a lot of book for myself, and and actually, this this year I I, I read quite a lot. But I, ha I have this very you know uh, old tradition. I it comes twenty plus years back. I always uh, read uh, a novel, a new novel by an Icelandic author called Arnaldur Indriason. I always start Christmas Eve by every year by by reading that novel, and 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 I so I did th this year. So I. I uh, this no, this uh, he always published a new book on the first of November, and 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 I have to wait from first of November until Christmas Day 
and always on Christmas day, you know, Christmas night, I'll uh -huh. start to read it. No, and, and, and that has been my tradition for, you know, 20 something years. And I'm sure it gives you new intellectual stimulation for the year to come, especially given your role in the literary sector. We just saw a picture of your stack of books and your family pet, who is very, very cute, by the way. Um, we saw some yeah, of the, the most... Yeah, the, the Princess Diana. <laughs> she, I hope she's well-behaved while you're reading those books and not paying attention to her. Um, I, I wanted... Yes. <laughs> Good to hear. We had some of the most popular titles up there. Is there a specific genre here? Because I was also interested to learn that even mass Matthew Perry's book, um, his autobiography, in fact, was also popular in Iceland, but we also have some of the other popular titles here. Atomic Habits, Friends, Lovers, and The Big Terrible Thing. I mean, an eclectic mix there, we think. Well, you know, of course, crimes and, and this Scandinavian nor uh, crime fictions are, are very popular in Iceland. And 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 you know it also depends if you, if you look at you know bestseller list from 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 bookstores or from supermarket so you know you know you people pre tend to go to bookstores and buy more more of uh, of uh, of fiction and and, and more non-fiction is, is bought by from supermarkets and, and and of course one thing is is also uh, you know we have a lots of of very good uh, icelandic uh, uh, children and, mm -hmm. and, and young adult authors so, so it's also very, very common practice to to buy books for for for, for kids. So, so it's a various kind, but 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 crimes they they crime you know genre. crime is still always they, popular. They, they, they dominate the, the bestseller list mostly. Well, yeah. I, I, are you giving us a lot of food for thought? I hope some of us can actually get to those books as well that should inspire a, a, a lot of thought. But I want to thank you for introducing us to this, uh, and happy reading. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks.